uh, at least it's slowing down. To be honest, I'm only recovering from yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was quite a bit under pressure for the past two weeks. That's why, apologies, I couldn't make it on last week's meeting. Uh, because there was some pressure and some work that came through. Uh, so it was a bit of pressure, uh, a pressure test work that I had to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, my son. Yes. Uh, did you get did you get any chance to find out anything about uh, the cost of parts or anything? No. <laughs> to be honest, uh, the last time we spoke, uh, it was where I left everything. I, okay. I I've been on site throughout years, so okay. I haven't years. So what I done when I was trying to send them, I'd already asked somebody to give me the cost, but then I I it, I, I, I had to hang it because of what I okay. I was going I, I had to do years. years My video. So disappeared let's try that again okay that looks better uh that's much better so do you now should we find out before i try to ship that to you how much it costs locally or do you want me to just go ahead and proceed on shipping Yes, I, I still wanted to find out, to be honest. Uh, I was keen on finding out so that I can also let you know so that it's, it's easier also for the other fellows that will come, you know, on the, on the African side. So at least we have both the prices. So I think it also helps us on your side as well to also know what are the sort of the, the cost estimates this side. Okay. So I don't know. Yes, yes. It's just that what I was thinking is that uh i'm also trying to speed up things so that we can get to the practical side yeah uh, but yeah so unfortunately is this work and stuff that sort of keep keep on interrupting me so i really wanted by now to be sort of getting started or at least uh having the order some of the stuff coming through so yeah so the only thing was really just to i'll still love to go out uh this side so that i can also share the cost with you and then okay. you can see so do you want me to wait until you find out the cost before we e proceed e yes because i would i don't okay. think it's something that would take long the guy that i spoke to yeah. uh wasn't very far and then he looked and he looked like somebody who could do the the costing very speedily so the only issue is i i wanted to issue him the 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 drawings the stl files as they are but then i realized there was a cost into it i didn't want to give him that sort of a guide what what it would cost normally from your side so i just wanted him to price from uh, his own uh, on just on his own without really any sort of guidance okay, okay. yes so yeah. i'm sure it's something that i i can have on monday first thing i can send to the guy uh, maybe i'll try a few other guys i only called one guy at that time and then i can try two or three guys that would probably help me uh, and then I, I can see a comparative between them and uh, obviously ose yes okay okay Please. that's that's cool uh so what, what should we do today then um do you have anything specific in mind or uh, yeah not really anything not really. <laughs> to be honest I'm, yeah okay. i haven't really touched on my question yeah um, it's been really yeah or honest so uh, yeah i think really it was just that oh i don't know how because really what i was trying to get to was to sort of find a way to quickly speed up things so there's also a friend that i spoke to with regards to the touch table and they do have a a, a fully uh, established shop so these guys are they they've got a foundry and then they've got a shop which they are not really using on a full-time basis so i said in the meantime while i'm trying to get off the ground i can sort of uh sort of be on their back i don't know how much work i'll have to do at their side but then the guy said look we can work a schedule out uh because remember there was two things that i had to do critically on on my critical path was the 3d parts uh 3d printed parts and the sort of the space to do the 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 uh to find the space for the cnc uh yes my son are those your friends so, there or is it more not it's really somebody who he does his own thing so what the guy does he does steel fabrication and he does pumps uh centrifugal pumps manufacturing and all that so it's more like a foundry but then he's got a shop and all those kind of things around so do it was just somebody do they manufacture the the centrifugal pumps from scratch 
correct yes they use send send casting yes oh. so they make centrifugal pumps for slurries and all kind of yeah all those kind of things yes mm, that's interesting yes yeah. yes um let's see do you have a document where you had um let's see so just mm -hmm. looking at your log mm -hmm. there there's the road map yes um, let me just look in so well Sorry. let's let's kind of get yes, on the same page. so so you're yes. seeing right now you're seeing here's the 3d printing that's definitely something you want to get up and sure. running that's correct and then from there do you see yourself getting right to the torch table or how, how uh, yeah it, it, it's kind of because i'm i'm still a bit uh i'm trying to really sort of uh chatter a way that i'll know so uh i it's it's, it's a it's a little bit of a I guess work at the moment i don't really know where 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 i will okay. is so what i may be doing was to try and do that step by step to just get off the ground with uh, the 3d printing yeah and then yeah. obviously okay. yeah take it so from let's, there. Yeah. let's focus on it now with the 3d printing i mean are you interested in so when you get up and going do you do you want to be more of yeah. a user or also a user and developer so for example if we have yes. um the challenge to develop the the, either like the high temperature printer or the large yes. printer like you yes. actually like to get into the design part or do you just want to see the products mm, bo both because I, I am also a developer in any way so i do a bit of design work and all that uh, not necessarily in 3d printing and stuff so it will also be interesting to sort of be involved in the in the design part and do you so, see yourself so you you see yourself yes. designing building producing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. using running enterprise do you see all of that or with a 3d printer yes yes so what i've identified to be honest is the big gap uh, i think the educational front this side in terms of 3d printing it's it's i think it's a it's a massive opportunity so obviously i want to be involved in the developmental side and then uh, like if you're developing you know things for a cause or for a purpose then i can be involved there so obviously at a certain point uh, i need to also sort of start uh, openly with you and say look maybe much and this is the opportunity that i see locally here we can maybe go into sort of education with the 3d printing and then uh, obviously with your support then we can also open that market because it's quite a a sort of untapped it's an untapped market uh, particularly in schools because i think that's where the opportunity is uh, so the similarity is happening a lot now with coding where people are doing a lot of coding and uh, on the IT side okay. uh, or the software side is so they I think there's an equal opportunity right, re, re, for the for the 3 printing 3d printing within that sphere so, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. so I think as we we spoke initially I think as per your vision what you were saying is better to work with the institutions so I'm still hanging on to that sort of uh, idea and then I've, I've I've really been sort of trying to find out how many people are really doing it there's not much and then there is really a requirement I mean uh, so obviously that's that's the biggest one that I wanted to sort of uh, ask to because it's low hanging and it's something that we could really be uh, sort of establishing a, a big footprint if we move quicker. So that's why my idea was to set off if there's a product already that's ready of the ground, I can start producing, making, uh, being able to sort of do the the seminars whereby I'll invite the students from the various schools, maybe at the maybe just a secondary uh, school level and then sort of introduce them to the because it's a big opportunity and then obviously trying to sort of introduce this more as a as a subject or some because it's, it's really it's really a critical skill uh, the way i see it in five years or ten years time to be an engineer you'll need to have some skills like obviously 3d printing coding and all those kind of things because they're becoming reality on a daily basis so uh my idea was around that uh, in terms of the enterprise inside initially to start to say okay maybe we can do the 3d printing together obviously with your support uh because i'll if it's just myself i don't really have much experience I, I can obviously try and rush and get everything up but i still need somebody like you to be there and then as an enterprise and obviously on the other front uh like i said i'm trying to free a bit of my time so that when i've got my sort of my time uh i own my time basically then i can do a bit of 
development and sort of challenges that comes up uh, on, on the design side. So I'm trying to be a bit of both. I don't know if I'm, I'm clear on that one, Marshall. Yes. Yeah. Um, how do you see the, the education side compatible mm-hmm. with industrial side? Like then you've got the metalwork mm-hmm. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. What do you see as the connection? So would you see that the, the education mm-hmm. enterprise would be a thing that will then lead into other things or would you want to do like both in parallel or how do you see it? Uh, I think uh, obviously it's much easier for, for, for introduction. Like I'm saying, uh, I don't know, I've seen uh, a lot in the States. What would it be happening is this this thing is already like a, a big thing, that side. So almost every kid knows about this thing. So this side you're dealing with uh, even pupils or learners that are not even exposed to the to the 3d printing at all so i mean and you're talking people that are almost on the verge of going to sort of the technical colleges Mm -hmm. uh, varsities and all that kind of thing so i think introducing it right there then it becomes easier to talk the language industrially because you're already talking with a group of people that have already been exposed to the kind of uh, technology and all that thing so what i've seen is it's very difficult to sort of grab the audience if they are not really sort of exposed to this kind of thing so because it so yeah so that's why I thought education is much easier in terms of obviously marketing the technology uh, and rapidly implementing it. It's much easier to capture large audience through education, through sort of programs like that, which we can set with technical colleges and even some universities, uh, whereby then it's easier to also roll it out industrially. Because an industry will give you, like for example, in mining, what these uh, big companies will do, they'll obviously... Uh, already employ people which are supposed to be competent in certain things. So I, I think upskilling them I- anyway before they even get into the sort of that sector, that working yeah. sort of EA yeah. yeah, yeah. So yes, uh, that was how the, I. Yes, where do you see the the distinction or the union of so there's education and then there's enterprise? Yeah. How do you see the enterprise yeah. getting into that? Like when you're doing the education part, where does the enterprise come in? Oh, oh, okay. Particularly around 3D printing. Uh, yeah. So, what, yes. Idea, uh, around... The idea is that... Oh, wait. <phone rings> Ideally, when we are introducing 3D printing... Yes, my son. What I found is that in the academic yeah. sector, like they're not high mm. on enterprise, typically. Correct. Yeah, that's, yes. a, that's a hard thing, but we need okay. to change that culture. Like, yes, I feel yes. that they are so. Uh, like, for example, a, a teacher. Like, if they're teaching, yes. Yes. for them yes. to have a self-interest or like an incentive to do production or any kind of enterprise, that's yes. not yes. within their. I don't think it's typically within their program description, and it's. So unless you get somebody that's really an outlier, like a really diversified person, they're not going to see the opportunity on the enterprise side. So I feel Mm -hmm. like we have to encourage that, guide that direction, because that's not going to happen. You're going to get a bunch of people that are kind of like playing with Mm -hmm. cute things as opposed to now thinking Mm -hmm. about, okay, how did I make a living with this? Mm -hmm. How did I change the economy? So basically transitioning that from this Mm -hmm. hobby kind of uh, an effect to this yep. is how we change the world with it. This is yes. livelihoods. It's ultimately like, what do each of us it do is. for their livelihood that makes the world happen, like, that creates the world that we live in? I follow you. So yes. how do we, what's your thought on, mm. let me, I have some thoughts, but I want to hear your thoughts first. Yes. What do you think yes. would be a route to introduce the entrepreneurial aspects as yes. we're going forward in education? Any yes, it, I think it's, Yes. So I, I, I always compare 3D printing sort of to like coding. Uh, so the guys in software, I mean, they, they're moving because what they, they are doing at the moment with schools and various institutions, they, they're doing what they call hubs, for example, whereby it's a central location and then uh, they call them, te- yes, like STEM. Uh, it will be like your science, technology, and uh, <coughs> mathematics and, and, and engineering uh, sort of hub whereby learners as an extra mural they come but obviously they pay on a monthly basis for you to sort of teach them coding 
and which is coding basically around programming of stuff your 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 your, yeah. your sort of is programming related stuff so uh it's, it's i i i didn't envisage 3d printing far from that because obviously you sort of want to introduce it but obviously as an extra mural whereby they sort of pay uh for the lessons that they come and attend mm. and i think that model is really working pretty well with uh, okay. various institutions locally here because a lot of guys are doing it and then so my biggest challenge was obviously it's easier to implement something like that locally but then obviously you'd want to sort of grow it at the national uh level and then i thought ah, the best way it's maybe to produce uh once we've introduced kids into this thing and then it becomes like a a part of the sort of their syllabus so after their school they go and uh, do the, yeah. the, 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 yeah. the lessons with new years so it becomes much more easier but then the internet is the easiest way of running things obviously if you want to reach, reach a, a, a larger crowd so my scale up plan was to obviously introduce the subject uh maybe through an internet platform whereby you can give lessons uh, either on a form of a an internet where a kid can log in for their lessons and all those kind of things just really to work out a program that will really suit the larger masses because honestly speaking the reality of introducing uh, this at an industrial level uh, but there isn't people who are really sort of technocrat or who know how to operate the stuff again it becomes a, a bit of a, a challenge also to sort of scale it in so i thought if you could have this whether they are ready to sort of just the secondary people who are almost or a technical college for example to offer this at, at a fee and it becomes much more i think feasible uh, but obviously it will be something that we'd have to sort of justify on a real feasibility and know what are the numbers and what sort of crowds will need and something like that but at a rough uh, sort of level that's, that was the idea Mashan. i don't okay. know if i'm okay efficient so how about uh, i want to mm. introduce this then then you can um i would want to yes Mr. encourage you to to introduce this around so you're teaching people how to do 3d printing but select Basically, some kind yes. of a product that you want to make yes and actually correct. make and develop it to a viable economic yes. product. I would That's actually correct. suggest yeah. the, um, I would I would suggest the three D printed electric motor, may, maybe. Uh, yes. Or something. Because just on that. Yeah, sorry, Masha, just to, to cut this short there, uh, the, 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 there are technical schools, which are secondary schools. In fact, I almost thought about something like that. Like, if you give them a, you work with them, you make them pay for teaching them the stuff, but then they're actually developing a, a real enterprise yes, product, yes, something yes, that's, yes. that's tangible, that's, that's even commercial, you, commercially viable. You can sell it. Uh, that was the whole idea. So particularly there are schools like that, you get technical colleges whereby they teach all sorts of technical skills like building, uh, plumbing, uh, you know, but then they just don't have this particular skill. So I thought 3D printing is even much more powerful because you can actually produce products that they are using uh, particularly even in other fields so that they can see the real potential because the idea is to really sell a technology that works, that can, a person is well aware that even if he buys a desktop 3d printer he can put it on a sitting room and he can print overnight and whatever he is printing can be can be can be done when over overnight so it's really it's really that but it, that's what i'm saying the and it, for me it seems much more easier to push that into the market and yeah. Uh, yeah. because people are not it's really a, a green felt uh, so nobody has really tapped into that yes have you thought about so do you see any contradiction between keeping the designs open source and make and still keeping people interested in all of that and making viable enterprises no, no it's not op it's, it can't be it, it will remain open source the reason being because i'm sure you'll also be involved at some of the stuff obviously i won't tire you with all the stuff and all that but i mean your involvement automatically if i mean if you give me that honor will obviously also mean that you are also well aware you are, it's easier for you to track i mean at that at the at the head office level to know okay what's happening this is what they're putting on the south african side and then you keep an eye on obviously the whole yeah uh, yes yes yeah. so it shouldn't really be a contradiction because i mean we do everything with a sort of footage everything we put it on video it's it's out there whatever that's developed it, it in fact it's even evidence because that's the selling point that's what we use anyway as, yeah. as marketing for others is and also just the selling point of the collaborative development because Correct. the basic Mission idea is. is like right now if yes. only a very tiny percentage of the entire population or yes. like a very small amount of energy was like a billion 
you know, a few million yes. to a billion. Like, yes. if you talk about the entire technosphere, which is a hundred trillion per year, right? If yes. we do a very, very tiny fraction, like a billion or yes. even a trillion, but trillion is like one yes. percent. Um, yes. yes, that's tiny, like on a big scale. But I'm saying that a small yes. effort right now could yes. open source entire civilization and create abundance for everybody. That's, that's the whole um, thing. Yes. That's the thing, and we yes. got to start thinking. Okay, okay, we're collaborating, yes. and yes. we are then therefore starting to work on bigger solutions. Then, you know, yes. how do we make prosperity for everybody, not just like, oh, I'm gonna. Yes suck up this technology so that i can make it better but you guys have uh, yeah maybe maybe it'll even be easier in south africa i don't know if you guys are culturally <laughs> when it comes to economic ubuntu like if you really yeah. guys if you guys really have it because i just haven't seen it i haven't seen it anywhere yeah. like in a fundamental yeah. way like culturally okay so you got a good mm -hmm. start culturally mm -hmm. your ubuntu mm -hmm. hopefully that will translate yeah. into the <clears throat> the public uh, sphere economic creation, yeah, yes. you know? no correct. Yes, my I mean, uh, it's 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 it, even also to what also humbles this big corporate is that they, if as soon as something is done at a community level, they don't necessarily have a, a, a big of a choice in terms of also recognizing it. In fact, uh, on an enterprise level, uh, for you, for myself as an individual, to try and push 3D printing alone and say I can go into the market and convince the these giants, it, it's also it becomes a futile exercise. But where if you can involve community, you spark yeah. their interest, they understand what what you're trying to do. You give them a task like they produce a real product, and then they can even yeah. uh, the guys will even give it the buy-in, the industrial guys to say, okay, this stuff works. We can actually now purchase this stuff from you. We can support you. We can sort of do. Yeah. Uh, whatever with you then it becomes even bigger because yeah it it, it, it sort of yeah so uh so really it, it it really supports what you were saying about uh the ubuntu because obviously uh it's 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 just a cultural aspect it's easier to sort of instill in people initially when you're starting with a, a program to say this is how we work and then it's open and then we need to sort of do things collaboratively in order for everybody to sort of benefit uh, equally all over the world so if we see success in south africa it must be able to translate success into yeah. a european uh, country or or somewhere else in the in the world yeah, yeah. So, so with 3d printing and then adding the filament making mm -hmm. and plastics into it like yes. you're solving the plastic issue that's Correct. that's a great yes. start so maybe um let's go right into the let's start talking about the technicalities of collaboration because i think if you yes. can be the like if i can transfer the knowledge that we have in terms of yes. here's the large collaborative development process and it's seamless yes. and it's easy and people adopt it as a culture that would be a great thing like because it yes. is in general like Co mm. collaboration is hard because people are just not used to it. it's a new cultural thing like even though the tools exist out there uh you know like some people use the col you know wikis collaborative mm. editing and stuff mm. like that mm. yes. uh, but to focus it to to large-scale collaborative product development nobody's doing it nobody's nah, really doing nobody's that. doing it but th that's so, what i'm saying this side i think it's it's really somebody like myself pushing it yeah. really into the market because that's where the whole thing is it's untapped i don't think in south yeah. africa it's maybe like in the u.s where people are knowledgeable about certain technologies and all this stuff. i think it's just a matter of uh, there's nobody really pushing the the sort of the the culture the, i think the culture is already there rather but the sort of the making people aware that they can in fact do better than corporates themselves by just simply coming together for the task collaboratively working openly and sharing everything with everybody and obviously seeing benefits from that as well because like you say it's the culture is obviously that of corporates where it's either you you know something and you know you, you're not you know, you're not willing to share it with everybody or you're just trying to work as a silo and it just doesn't uh, it doesn't go anywhere really because it's not doing any yeah any 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 justice yes. okay so take a look let's uh so let's start getting into this collaborative development process so take a look at this link mm -hmm. right okay. here and um let's get into the process so let's see uh, i want to see you in there just mm -hmm. so go in there and edit it and go into edit mm -hmm. um if you just click on it yes um maybe i'd rather copy let's see can you can you uh, click on it and edit it? Uh, I think, yeah. 
I'm trying to. I think I need to copy it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just paste it. Mm. I'll just copy and paste it. Right. What am I saying? I'm just gonna try and. It's not coming up as a. You're right. It's just text. It's not showing as a link. Yes. No, but it's fine. I've got it. Yes. It says 3D printer design manual. I've got it open on the. I don't know. I'm just okay, trying there to. There you go. So. Um, yes. So that's. Should I share my screen? With no, that's you, okay. Maybe? You can. Um... Or I can just go. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll guide okay. you through it. So okay. So. Yes. So that's the design guide. Uh, yes. Guide, guide yeah so okay. the idea behind the design guide is is the notion that yes, uh we're not just learning how to build one thing we're going to learn how to build a universe of 3d printers you and how to modify them and design them and, and do that collaboratively so focusing yes. on the collaborative part let's talk about the basics of the process so the first thing is if you want to yes. do collaborative mm. digital design you need open yes. source software so let's start with freecad so now i want yes. you what i want you to yes. do is yes. uh and let me sh let me share my screen actually so um yes. so you can see my screen um mm. on the wiki there's a page called uh, freecad of course freecad just freecad yes yes i've got i've got freecad already i've downloaded okay. the software okay did you download yes. it from um uh, so let me ask you this question did you download yes. the uh what's it called the app the it's called, yes, um, the the like app the, image, or did you install it? No, I installed it. I installed it. I downloaded and installed on my on my PC. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's try another exercise because um, in order for okay. somebody like so they don't have to download it and install it, you can do this other oh. thing called app image, which okay is really what system are you on? Are you on uh, Windows or? I'm on Windows. Yes, that's right. Okay. Um, okay. Does Windows do app image? Let's see. This can be used to run app images on Windows. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's try this. Looks like you can. So go into. Okay. Um, this link here. So go to the FreeCAD page. Uh, is it the last link that you just sent now? Oh, let okay. me. That one. Um. Freecat page on the wiki. So basically, when I say Freecat page on the wiki, the article named Freecat. So it's like open source okay. ecology org slash wiki slash yes. Freecat. So that's the page name is Freecat. Oh, okay. Yes. So it's on, on open source ecology. Yeah, uh, wiki. wiki. I'm, 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 at it. I'm on it now. Yes. With the okay. basic, most scroll recent down. versions. Yes. Yeah, scroll down there and FreeCAD downloads. See the FreeCAD point sixteen app image. Can you click uh, on it? I am looking at. Okay. On the app image. Yes. I see it says app image available to download. Should I click the and download it? Uh, yeah. It's available for download in. Um... Yes. Click on the free so GitHub be... page for the 1.16 release. So we want point yes, sixteen. Yes, that's why I am. Yes. And then what do you do from there? Um, it's now busy downloading the app page. Okay, Emerson. Just a step back. What are the difference if you? What is the difference if you download this way and the, the normal? Uh, or does this so, is, is it already now loaded with the? Uh, no, okay, it doesn't have our, uh, all of our stuff in there, but it has the correct FreeCAD version, which is which we want to get people. Uh, using, so. Okay, okay, okay. So this is version. So you uh, you downloaded it? Yeah, it's still busy. Sorry, downloading. I'm still waiting for it. Okay. Yes. So it says about a minute or so left. Mm. Okay, because the see the thing about it is when you download it, you yes. don't have to install it. Now, so for example, if people have trouble finding, well, first of all, it's important that they mm -hmm. use. We're learning everything on sixteen. 
Sure. That's not the latest version, but it's good for what we want. Yeah, I think I yes. No, I follow because they they do of course a lot of improvements. I just, I'm just looking at the one that I've got. Uh, uh, how far hmm. are you in terms of download? It's, uh, it's about uh, four or five percent left now. It's a bit I don't know, okay. but it's almost there. Yes. Uh, if you look at my screen. Yes, my son. Uh, did you click on this or did like when you? Okay, so from here, it, which yes, one did you click on? Yes, it's complete now. Yes, it's so complete. The download is complete. Sorry, my son. It's sixteen. I don't know. I, the screen is a bit tiny. Your screen, it's a bit small. But right. I clicked on sixteen. Yeah, it looks right. Is this what you click on? Because the one that I previously at the bottom, yes, yes. Okay, it's you clicked done. on I'm that. I'm done right? with the downloading. Yes. Okay. So now I've got the download. Should I uh, make sure it's executable? Oh, okay, double click mm. on it. Let me know what happens. Just double click on it. Yes. Uh, it says the file does not have an app associated with it. Okay, so why don't you go into right click on yes. it and, and make executable? Okay. Oops, I don't know what happened here. Not sure if it allowed. Okay, I want to see if this works. Yeah. Okay, so what we're doing right now is that you've got a different operating system than I do, and I want to make sure that whenever we talk to somebody, we know how to get them on the same system. So the easy way is use OSC Linux, which we might have to next time. But let's see if it, this works oh, for now. Okay. Okay. Because we're getting right into like, okay, the first thing about mass collaboration is everyone's got to have the same tools. Otherwise, you're going to spend for, infinite for time. Sure. For sure. Yes. People you just trying to get the software. No, I follow yes. Yes. Uh, I don't know what should I should I try and because uh, I think I've got the other version. I might have to delete the eighteen. I've got zero one eight. So I yeah. might maybe have to delete that one and then but I'm sure I can download it. I don't think it's a difficult task. Okay, so it, what happens when you click on this app image it doesn't doesn't open up as FreeCAD sixteen? Uh, Yeah, it, it gives me the option how to open. It's asking how to open this app, and then yeah, it gives me various options. So I really have to select a pro a program to open it. Yeah, like either Google, Google Chrome or uh, the Explorer or Notepad or something like that, which I don't think they are correct. No. Uh, yes. Let me see if I can find out here. Is it not that maybe I might have to delete what I have already? The 18. Let's see how to run app image on Windows. Okay. Um, yeah, no, you got to install some th stuff to, in order to run the app image. So, I thought, yes. okay. Um, but I, I can figure, I think I can figure out. Uh, what version? So do you have 18? I've got 18, my son, yes. But it's, I, I'll just delete it. I'll just follow because I, I just want to confirm to everything. So I'll just do as you say. I'll just put 16. So what I can do, I can just delete this one now, and then,
Let's see. So, um, what's the status on your side there? So, do you have? Um, you don't have a sixteen, right? No, I don't have sixteen. Okay, so uh, that's the eighteen. Okay, so let's let's save it for next time. But for now, let's talk about the collaboration process. So, so the first thing is everyone has to get on the same page, and that means FreeCAD sixteen for now. Okay. Uh, since, but let so let me um. If you look at my screen, so I'm gonna. Screen. You can Please, add this I just wanted to ask you to maybe uh, magnify it a bit. It's a bit far. Oh, it's screen. a bit far. Yes. Yeah. Um. Maybe let me just try and close this other. It's a bit far, you're saying. Uh, I think it's a bit better now. I, I don't know if you try it. Well, can you see okay, this? Or, or is this? Yes, it's not far better. Now it's gone. Now, yes, now it's okay. Yes. Now it's okay. Yes. Okay, it's okay now? Yes, okay, okay so so this is our guide to collaborating on uh, so 3d printer design manual mm -hmm. but let's call it a collaborative design manual because this is not just you learn how to design but you learn how to design it collaboratively with others so, so it's a development process it's more than one person and that means you're doing some things in a different way so first get on the same page uh, so I'm gonna just write write the steps for uh, to so first of all we have um, uh, we should start with by saying that OSC has a construction set approach right so that we're not designing one thing we're we're designing whole systems for how to design things. Start by using the same software. Yes. So FreeCAD 16. Um, so use either OSC Linux. So here you can. Um, so OSC Linux. What I would suggest is, um, so have you ever system. have you ever created a live USB version of a Linux? Nah, no, I you haven't done that. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's that's the next lesson because you you're gonna have to teach people how to do all this stuff. So, um, so so to do that, you download download the Linux 2.0. Or app image. So, so, the so yep. that will be the operating system. Yeah. So, for okay. OSE Linux 2.0, so using Linux Mint, which is based on Ubuntu. So, so one option is, is download. Download OSC Linux 2. You have to make a make a live make a live USB. So that means you can you can just put it into one of your USB ports and it will boot from it. Oh, okay. I follow you. Instead of your regular operating system. Yes, yes. Taking the all right. So live USB, that's described actually. Um, so somewhere here, live USB. Okay. Let's see where that. Okay. So what is a live USB? Uh, this describes what a live USB is. Now, how to create a OSC Linux USB using Ubuntu? Okay, so that's instructions for Ubuntu. Yes. 
how to create it using Windows. So you can do that right there. Um, so using Windows. So there's instructions. Wait, what is this? It's not. Document is not here. What happened to it? Oh damn it! It's been deleted. Okay, so and here's my instructions. Okay, well, I'll just go to the internet and say how to make make a live USB in Windows. Okay, so is Windows acceptable? Are you happy with Windows or? Well, I am not using Windows, so no, we don't we don't use that in general because Windows is not an open source operating system. That's what I, I wanted to ask. Is no, what I can do? Free up one of the computers and then just use maybe the Linux operating system. Yeah, because um, everyone will have access to it, and we we make a dedicated distribution, which is all the software that we use. Correct. Yes. And that that way you can get that's that's like the first thing you got to get on the same page. So that's step number one. Get on the same page. Um, so I'm thinking I'll just do the, the Linux, OSC Linux, and then yeah. I'll just get one of my old yep. laptops and then just probably yep. use that one for Windows. Yeah, that'll be good. Um, but you still got to make that live USB with your existing system. So you do this, you make that happen. This is uh, talks about how to do that in Windows. Okay, so you can do that. And then... So this is and make live USB or or just download the app image. Okay. Let's see, does app image also work in does app image work in, in um in Mac? Mm -hmm. I think it does too. It should. Oh, yes. On I'm Mac. Sure it does on yes. No matter where you shoot your app images, you're still able to run them. Yeah, it should it should should be yeah. able to, to work on Mac. I'm just familiar with uh, Linux. Okay. So, or download the app image and run it. App image for FreeCAD 16. So, so I'm going to link to that explicitly there. Uh, under FreeCAD. Now, you can do the app image, but you have to have app, app images for like everything. Uh, so, so just use, the easiest is just use the OSC Linux. Yes, because it's already loaded with. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna put a link to this app image here. That's um, let's see, uh, copy link address. So right here, that will get you directly. Onto the yeah to the download is. yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So say we have the and, and, and I, we can't do it together right now since you don't have the 16. But let's go through this process. So we get on the same page. We get 16, and then um, the critical tools. So critical workflow, and let's try to keep it as simple as possible. Critical work workflow for OSC so you can collaborate. I mean, this is literally with thousands of people. It is. So, keep a work log. Use FreeCAD 16. And people, other people can use more than like FreeCAD 16, but for new people, just go with FreeCAD 16. Like, like people will will fight this, like, everyone will fight this. It's like, why are you using FreeCAD 16? It's old. Yes. The answer is, but I, um, it's sufficient. No, I know. I mean, I'm, I'm still using the old U. I don't know, but because you don't use Windows, but I still use the XP. Okay. Still, yeah. yeah. Use, so keep a work lock, use FreeCAD yes. 16. Um, yes. The work lock on the wiki, and there's a whole technique to that, so that means you you paste paste all links to what you work to what you're working on uh, 
uh, use FreeCAD 16, uh, learn how to do part libraries, learn how to create, well, use FreeCAD 16, and then you got to learn the basic, there's a basic exercise, the feature on feature exercise, that if you can know how to do that, you can do just about anything. So feature on a feature exercise, I'll link to that. Okay then, actually, because I think I've, I've started with, I was doing some of the stuff, basic geometry and all yeah. that. Yeah, so under FreeCAD 101, that's the t lesson three. This is like the basic workflow yeah. tutorial and then feature on a feature, so lesson 3A and 3B. Like, yes. if you can do that, so I'm going to yes. link to 3A to, because that... I'm going to do some of the lessons already, is that is on the... Yep. Um, okay, and then get certified. Like, get certified on this. Like, get a badge. Get a get a competency recap badge. Meaning, like, if you can do the free, feature on the feature exercise, uh, okay. uh, then you qualify to do basic collaboration with us. Sure. Now, for FreeCAD badge. What is that? Excellent. It doesn't exist. So the FreeCAD badge means this is your test. Like if you do that, we'll give you a badge for knowing FreeCAD. So what you do is do the lesson 3A and 3B from uh, FreeCAD 101. All right? So you do those. And then, like what you did for your video of interest, submit a video where you show that you can do that in like a minute. Sure. And then, then you're a pro. You're, you, you know, 80% of FreeCAD by that time, and it took you like an hour to learn it. So that's the ideal situation. Okay, so submit. So, so then... So it will be just on a minute. Yeah, like a minute video yeah. on how I... How you did it. Mm -hmm. yes. So do the actual exercise of drawing a feature on a feature in FreeCAD according to the to the above exercise to the above lesson and record so do that and then step three is record a one minute video where you show that in one minute you can do that exercise And then you add a free cat badge to your word lock. So we'll send we'll send it to you. We'll send you a badge icon with your name. Okay. Okay, and then it looks like uh, it looks like this. So for example, uh, I can look at, I know Melanie, for example, Melanie Log. She just got that badge, so it looks like that. Free, uh, now, this is the OSE Dev badge. We'll just get you a free cat badge. No, that's actually for, uh, it's going to look like that, somewhat like that. Um, but that's a basic, basic exercise. Do the free cat 101, lesson 3A and 3B. Do the actual exercise. Record a one minute video. Submit that. So, uh, so the procedure is submit that Please. video link to info at opensourceecology.org. Okay. And then uh, we OSC sends you you a badge to put on your log, and then you can do about 80% of any work, any any CAD design. Like you're you're like close to knowing just about anything. And then it's just about some other details that you have to learn. But this is it. So so that's the free CAD badge. Get a free CAD badge just like that. Uh, so what's the what's the point of that? The point of that is in a very short time
Where's your window? Let's see. Uh, I lost. Uh, your window disappeared from. The, yeah, I can't see it either. Yes, right. Where did you go? Huh. Maybe I'll stop sharing. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's funny, I, I lost where your window is. Let me just try to get in there again and see if I can. Oh, hi, 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 hi. You can still see me, right? No, yes, I can see you. Except I lost where. Let me try. Let me try to shut down and. Oh, there we go. There we are. Uh, I was left somewhere else. Okay, so so here, like, well, let me keep sharing my my screen here. But just just to you get familiar with what I'm doing. So on my log, like you know, since it's Friday, September twenty fifth. We're going through a uh, 3D printer design guide. Design guide, yes. All right, so you can find it here. You can do the same on your log to link to it if you want. Sure. So now we can access that. So there's the design guide. It's a collaborative design manual. Let's get back in there again. Uh, so we talked about get on the same page, learn how to create part libraries. Like, okay, so the idea from there is, let me, um, so there you are. Oh, um, let's see. So the idea being that if you know how to use FreeCAD, then you can share those files with an infinite number of people. You can upload them to the wiki. It's important that you or can organize that on the wiki in a way that other people can find it. So how do you do that? Like say we're working on say you're working on the next version of the 3D printer, right? Well, uh, the development process follows a standard development process like they use in product development. How much of that are you familiar with anything of how uh, product development works like what are all the steps of a product uh, development process not really no no I okay wouldn't say. Hmm. so um, what we have created is on the wiki there's a template that walks you through all the de different development steps and it makes sense it's it's like you have to start with an idea you have to then develop it technically you have things like bills of materials and, and build instructions. Oh, no, that's what I do on a daily basis. You mean like, yeah, okay, normally it will be, it will be more on a project side, yeah, but eventually that's how we will do our designs. Obviously, yeah, so we, you get your drawings, put your BOQs, price them, and obviously... Yeah, yeah, yeah and there's a formal the process, process you can create around that, but we have that, we have a template for that. So... Oh, uh, yes. So for the level, like if you're gonna run a design process with people and you actually organize the, the development process so that people can follow it and you can involve other people with it and that you can get multiple people working on different things, you have to keep some kind of a paper trail, uh, some kind of organization. So what we do is, uh, let me share my screen again. It's the development template. So, for example, oh, here, <laughs> here's the open source pond. Yeah, I can see but that's that's what the development <laughs> template oh, looks like. Oh, oh so it's a new open, open source creation from. Oh wow! Uh, you can, can build that. But like, for example, there's 3D CAD. You know, there's. Is it uh, sort of like that? Is it 3D printed? Oh, that's the pantoon. Okay. That's yeah. Interesting. Well, here's an example of. Uh, so some of the most critical oh. elements are step number five, which is 3D CAD. Like you start with like concept, you know, we start with a concept, um, you know, we thought about like, okay, how do you do this? Well, here's what we, that's our concept. CAD is the most, like out of anything, I would say that uh, the 3D CAD is the most important, single most important 
uh, thing, followed by bill of materials. BOQZs. That's a really important because if you if you mm -hmm. show a design but you don't show like where you get any of the parts, yeah. where are the parts, mm -hmm. then it's worthless. Mm -hmm. And then if you have the BOM and CAD, you can't build it unless you have some build instructions, which are yes. somewhat missing here. Which you but we do have like build pictures and video, for example, where we go through. Um, oh, here's some use use case mm -hmm. uh, use case. Oh look, that's me. Um, but that's uh, the build was like we documented the whole build, like how do you do it? So you can actually a person can go from uh, uh, like turn this into a build procedure, right? I follow these. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but that's see all this is captured inside this development template. So how do you create this development template? So I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, in Wiki, there's a thing called templates. Um, so, and the way you access a template is, uh, this template is actually called Dev Plus. So this is what it's like. This is this is the actual template, okay? And in order to use it, here's a, here it talks about how to use it. It tells you to double bracket. So let's say, let's see, are you going to be developing a, well, you are going to develop so let's actually apply that to your your case of what you're going to do first. So, well, first you're going to build the, we're going to have you do the Pro 3, the 18-inch bed printer. Now, for your build, you can probably, there will be like a little bit of development in that you're, a, you're using a different, you're in a different country, you're going to have different supply chains and all that. So what you want to do, like you don't want to be documenting in our template, uh, you can, but it's going to get messy. You could do it. Yes. Okay, so for example, we already have, so that's the open source pontoon, but here's like the Pro 3 development template right here. This is what we have already. Yes. Right? Yes. But the thing is, if you go into South Africa, like your BOM will be different because you got different sourcing. Like, well, it'll be still, you might have different links. So there'll be slight, the point is, there will be slight modifications that you'll be doing. In order to keep everything organized, the easiest thing to do is don't use this, because you'll be like mixing up the African, South African build, which would be, of course, like the build pictures will be different, right? Your data collection will be different. Um, BOM will be different. Other things might be the same. You might make some modifications. So, so in open hardware, the concept is yeah. every single bu build when you're talking about developing is treated yeah. like a fork. You know what a fork uh, is in, in software? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I took it literally. Okay. No, I don't know in software. Or meaning yeah. a different version. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. You have yeah. to treat it as that because otherwise you're going to start confusing the different versions. The whole... Yeah. And that... And then uh, the GitHub people will say, well, why don't you just use GitHub? Yeah, you can do that. It's a more complicated workflow. We've got a simple workflow where just embed the development template for your particular build. Don't use ours because your build is actually a fork because some of the things will be different. It's not like software. Software can be identical. You can use the identical compiler to compile your software. In yeah, hardware, no the compiler is never uniform. The equivalent of a compiler is tools, procedures, human skill, what you did, like your bill of materials. Like, it's different, and for which reason you have to keep every version treated as a fork. So we'll take this development template, and we're going to say... Um, Let's set it up on your log. And I want you to, well, I'll show you. I'll show you how to I would do it. I'm going to make it as an yeah, exercise. Let, yeah, let me ahead. try first. I would, I would say, let me just give it, take it as an exercise machine. And then, so I get my compatibility. Yeah, the competency. Yeah. I'll show you how to. Because so, it doesn't help if you show me. Yes. Okay, so I'll record What I really so. like to do. I'm, 
Oh, yeah, you want to you wanna be able to do this. If you're going to be teaching people, you need to know how to do Correct. this. Correct. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so I'll show you real quick. quick. It's actually yeah. simple. So I'm going to go okay. to a um, okay. page called test. Just, you know, sample page. Okay. Yes. What is this thing? Let's see. Uh, view history. Okay. Sorry, Mashen. I don't know. You're not sharing the screen. Ah. Or maybe you're still doing it on your side. Yes. No. Okay, I gotta share the screen. Yes. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Okay, so test. Yes. Anyway, um. Okay, so this is a test, you know, sample page called test on the wiki, sandbox, basically uh, edited. Okay, so how do you create that template? It's simple, it's double bracket, and the template name is called dev plus. Yes. Uh, and this is, so template dev, it's actually dev plus. So this template here, here on the bottom it says how to use it. So I'm, I'm just doing what it says here. Subs, substitute dev. Okay, so uh, what you have to do is subst colon dev plus dev plus is the name of the template. And then pipe, which is the vertical slash. Uh, the parameter you're passing into it is, you have to say one. So this is Lesejo's no, wall 3D printer. We're going to oh, yes. 3D okay. printer. Okay. Different ease. Or yes. let's say uh, D3D D3D Pro, because it's called D3D Pro 3. That's the 18th version. Yes. South Africa. So let's call it that. Okay. And what happens? So this is when I save it. Look what it did. It created all of this. See that? So D3D Pro South Africa. CAD, right here. Uh, yeah. so now With that one line, I was able to create all of this, and now you can start doing it. So how do you do each step? Like each one of these things shows you how to do it. Like for example, 3D CAD, it shows you how to do it. You know, these are just links. But here, your content linked to the work product is what you care about. So now you can um, start filling this in here. Now the thing is, like for example, for the 3D CAD, you can use all the stuff that we used. But if you make modifications, you modify it. You know. Yes. So this is so maybe the exercise for you for next time is to embed one of these these work these things. But you want to also put it on a page that makes sense, like you wouldn't put it on a page called test. You would put it. I would put it on my log. Yes. Uh, yeah, on your log. But then, what would you call that page? I would say D3D Pro South Africa. I think it was to be yes, D3D D3D Pro. South Africa, that would be fine. Well, yes. actually, Pro 3, because it's the third, third Pro version. 3, SA, so yes. let's do like D3 Pro, whatever makes sense to you, but it's definitely Pro yes. 3 South Africa. Yes. So you, you do that, and then you'd link to this page on the wiki. So that gets you um, learn how to create. So here, this is create a development template. So this is what we just did. Yes. Uh, this, so the template dev plus, uh, that's the, learn how to create a uh, product development template. Okay. So I'm going to link to the dev plus template there. Um, more instructions, so if you want to read more about templates. Uh, go to, um, we describe this on development template. So this is basically, we used to do like, this This video is when we used to do that within uh, an embeddable Google Docs, but it's actually much simpler to do it right in the wiki. Um, so here it's saying the wiki version of this template is called template dev, but actually I, I added, so I need to update this and um, Template dev and template. It's called dev plus. That one, the dev plus. The difference between dev and dev plus. The dev plus has the info box at the right. 
Okay. Um, info box is this thing, this box of things. Yes, yes. So you can read more about development templates, uh, but uh, so what would be good is if you maybe like for next week, like review this what we've done here. So your your exercise, I'm gonna yes. put a note here. Nacelo exercise. Yes. Create a D three D Pro Three South Africa development page on the wiki. Yes. And link to your log. Okay. Right. That's your exercise. So if you know how to do that, then we you can now organize. See, because because for each one of those steps, you can yeah. get a. A person or even a team to work on it, yes. and then you can manage like 40 different steps happening. You can have multiple yes. people working on each step. You can further break each step. Like for example, for the CAD, you can break the, the the printer down into many parts, so you can have a whole team working on that. And okay. the point is, if you if you want to participate in a collaborative, large collaborative development process, yes. Um, yes. you have to organize this really well like that, and it, simple tool like a wiki with FreeCAD allows you to do that and it's a little bit more to this than that but if you can get so now if you can use FreeCAD and the wiki and your log like that you can pretty much do anything we need to learn about part libraries how you create like for example uh, like you saw in the, the open source pontoon you had all those little images with all the different parts in the CAD how do you do that that's also important because then visually you can see okay that's the part I have the link right below it you can access everything visually and it's all linked from your development template so that way you can do this seamlessly and then if you have a new version as I said every new build should literally be a fork unless it's the same build like I'll continue developing the, the, the Pro 3 template um, and maybe you can contribute to that too if if uh, if it's to the steps that remain the same. But if it's to like you know, for example, build of materials, that's gonna be different. You got different links. So so exercise for next time. Try to uh, set up one of these templates. No, definitely yes, yes. And then the uh, second part is. Make sure you have yes, either yes. download OSC Linux or use the FreeCAD image 16. So yes, I'm going to write another yes, note here. So I, yes, yes. For next time, make sure you have FreeCAD 16 to use, ready to use. Yes. Either on, so I'm typing this underneath uh, on the 3D printer design guide thing, uh, either uh, as uh, OSC Linux 2 or app yes. image. So we can. I want to start um, get walking you through that process because it's it's simple to learn. Like it'll take you an hour to learn it if you if you're focused on it. And we need to get you going on that so then you can do CAD and then you can organize it on the wiki and then start leading teams doing that. And that's what you want to teach your people in South Africa. You want to, yes. you want to bring this to South Africa because right now nobody knows how to do collaborative CAD development. Every every team uses their proprietary software. They don't share that with anybody. There's, this is like doesn't exist it's cutting edge it's yes. very simple but it's yes. cutting edge yes. nobody's doing it yes. um, outside of large some proprietary teams but even the proprietary teams the way they work they um, they typically lock files down so that uh, one one workflow is where people lock files down so you can't nobody else can edit them to manage edit conflicts but we do it in a different way we we allow everybody to work on it, and then once we merge it together, that's when you decide which which version goes in. But anyway, oh, yeah. more details. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. But the basics is uh, so so for next time, let's see if you can uh, do that. And then also get okay. get a quote for the three D printer parts so that we can. Uh, yeah, get that I think I'll sort on Monday so that you can make a decision. But I, I would I would think yeah, it's it's gonna be expensive this side anyway. So but I, I'll just do it on Monday. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. 
All right. And then I read the piece, sorry, Mashana, I couldn't comment because I was so busy. Yeah. The one that you sent. Yes. No, I think it's very accurate in terms of how you, you've put Which it. article was that? Uh, around the education, uh, doing the injustice, really. The I think you sent me a link previously. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I remember that. That was good. That was something yes, interesting. Yes. Um, yes. No, yeah. Because it's very accurate. Yes. But then a, a friend of mine was analyzing it differently. What he says is that, you know, it's, it's always not that uh, education is a bad thing. I mean, uh, I think the idea that must also be taught is that outside an institution, one can always be take other skills because, you know, it's, it's not really wasteful as such to sort of go through that uh, school. But then obviously a lot of things are really relevant to, to anything else outside. Yeah, of course. Uh, so I think that yeah. what you're referring to is what I wrote was about uh, yes. you're never never learning like the best practice, right? So there's some exactly. yes. because yes. best practice is proprietary. So you're always learning somewhere like behind the curve and which behind the curve, that's correct. <laughs> which yes. which I think is kind of waste. That that was my critique, just pointing out that uh, for sure, yes. as long as things are not open source, you're always learning. Something that yeah, you're yeah. always behind the curve. No, for sure. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. So one has to really be. Yeah, I think it, it's it's unfair, but yeah, it's just. Which is a, another way to put it. I, I thought it's interesting to know that that just simply enforces mediocrity. Like, we think that oh, we're learning to be the best. No, we're learning to be mediocre. <laughs> to be exactly. <laughs> um, which is, I think, a cute way to say it, but I think it's so true. Like. Because imagine the unleashed potential when you're actually learning the cutting edge, when you're always on the cutting edge because you have access to it. So that's a big deal. And that's what, that's the kind of world we want to create. Yeah, no, it's it's really powerful. So I was yeah. thinking, yes. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy, Mashan. I think it was a good piece. Yes. So I don't know. You do journals as well uh, with regards to the PhD because I know you sometimes write a lot around that. I'm uh, just asking yourself personally as a doctor on your side. Do, do I, I do, do what? Journals, like you write articles? Oh, uh, not, not really. Like you can see publications. On, I wrote one, uh, yeah, one thing yeah, yeah. At the, in the MIT Innovations Journal, but not really. It's like, it's kind of a different yeah. world. Yeah, but I'm open to it. Like, I, I think a lot of this yeah. stuff, like if people want to collaborate, and yes. write articles. I, I put my name to some too. I, I think there's a lot yes. of good stuff we can share. We just haven't yes. done that a lot because we've just been busy implementing real things, not talking about them. Yeah, I just need more on the academia yeah. uh, side of things a lot. Yes. But I would understand because I'm sure if you, the idea is there also in some of the universities will be also nice because I think. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. definitely. Well, and that will happen more. Yeah, yes, Yep. No, I, mean, I really appreciate it because I think, yeah, I, so I'm, I'm glad uh, I'm going to do all that stuff that you mentioned for, for next week. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I think that's good for now. Let's, let's do that in uh, yeah. the meet next week. I appreciate that. Excellent. Hold on. Let's see. Um,